What's up and welcome back to the channel. You're listening to Ninja Knight. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell up above for future uploads. Check out the links posted in the description down below to support the channel and consider joining the channel today. Also, make sure you're following me here on Odyssey. It's available on web browser, iOS and soon to be available on Android. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a spoiler review of the movie Black Widow that has been released now in 2021. This is a movie that has suffered a number of pushbacks, a number of delays, and it has released now to an absolute whimper, in my opinion. What I want to start off by doing in this video, and I know this kind of goes against what an awful lot of other reviewers do, but I might as well just tell you out straight what's going on. The Taskmaster character is the character that suffers probably the most within this movie. And why does it suffer the most? Well, it seems to suffer the most because from what we were led to believe, particularly with the way Rick Mason, uh, played by O.T. Fagbenley, was promoted, that this character was going to be Taskmaster. And then we heard some sort of allusion then to him having a relationship with Natasha and this ultimate betrayal because this is what this movie seemed to be hemmed around. It seemed to be focusing on the theme of betrayal. But what we get then is a very unsatisfactory end towards this movie and something that's been very interesting to note is that Rick Mason, O.T. Fagbenley, is not Taskmaster. Now why is that interesting to note? Well it's interesting to note because here we have previs of what the character model was supposed to be of Taskmaster. Now what they do with this is they put a character more or less underneath the suit so that they can move the character around and have some sort of bodily functions for the character muscle types and all of this sort of stuff and in my opinion what was supposed to happen towards the end of this movie i think as it was originally written was the glass was supposed to be cracked on his mask which was what gave taskmaster his powers essentially was the ability to mimic because the glass was out to tell him kind of like stark tech i do believe that there was a number of people out here that were saying as such early on and i think that that's what the company did i think a lot of people guessed correctly that it was rick mason i think a lot of people guessed correctly that it was going to be stark tech and i think that the company perhaps panicked and they decided to rewrite the character and change it it's very noticeable within the movie itself when natasha meets with rick mason that it, something seems off something seems odd and i think this is it so as we can see here it looks like rick mason underneath the mask how can we tell well, we can tell because the eyes look very, very similar as we can see here. It's obviously a male expression too. And then we have a comment then from O.T. Fagbenley himself. Now, if I'm butchering his name, apologies on that one. But here we have said his Black Widow character, Rick Mason, was completely different from the role he auditioned for. So what role did he audition for? That's a comment that I would like to hear more of from him. So Taskmaster is the one that actually suffers the most within this movie and I'll get onto that now in a moment but just giving a brief kind of plot point as to what's going on and some of the things that don't really add up and shape up throughout this movie. First of all what I want to say is this, some of the comments that have been made by some of the stars within the movie have been quite strange. Scarlett Johansson herself has come out and said that this is a movie that represents the full feminist sort of progressive nature of feminism and all of this type of nonsense that she's talking about. Over the last couple of years, I don't know why she's chosen to speak about it now. Maybe because she knows it's safe enough to do so and that the movie is going to get hurt as a re result of this type of nonsense from her. And she's just deciding to step off the train and just leave a bit of a, a mess for them to clean up. Perhaps maybe she feels a little bit more like that this should have been her movie because as a result then in Yelena here that she's actually the character that a lot more people are talking about. She seems to be the one that more people are interested in. And I think most people like myself even probably will regard this character as going to be Black Widow in the future or she's going to have a, a future within the MCU as evidenced by the after credit scene, which we'll talk about. But what you're seeing here is a star that seems like she's wanting to go at this movie. Now, whether it's to deal with trying to wreck this person's career or whether she didn't agree with the movie or whether she's just deciding to virtue signal herself because she knows that she's getting older now and that roles are going to diminish as she gets older maybe that's got something to do with it but some of the comments that she's been making lately as well with relation to being objectified within Iron Man 2 are very strange considering the fact then she was in the nip in a movie called Under the Skin a couple of years later so make of that what you will 
you look at Florence Pugh then, this is a person who has gotten a lot of notoriety over the last couple of weeks due to her part in this movie. And also then some of the stuff that she gets up to. Social media, she's decided to jump on a bandwagon of a couple of highly paid soccer players getting abused on social media. And all of a sudden she's jumped on that bandwagon and think it's horrible, which it is not nice for them to hear. But it's a kind of a strange one whilst your movie is out and playing to decide to jump on that bandwagon to appeal to people that are probably not going to see a movie anyway. So, very strange indeed. Then you come and look at David Harbour here. And this guy has been saying some weird stuff over the last couple of weeks. There's been a couple of comments that have come from him with relation to him saying that I don't know anybody who could disagree with a socialist ideology mad stuff considering that this is a man that charges 80 euro for an autograph at conventions mad stuff considering that this is a man that charges 90 euro for a photograph at conventions this is a guy that's married to lily allen who is an entertainer herself and her brother alfie allen is an entertainer himself who has acted in game of thrones i don't see david harbour sharing his wealth with anybody else do you nor lily allen nor alfie allen so very strange things that this fella is saying here now. So this is what we're getting now in this MCU now. We're after <laughs> we're after getting a couple of weirdos that have gotten on board. Brie Larson was probably the start of it. And this looks like a culmination now of weirdos or Russ. What they need to do is they need to not have these people on board. And as we've seen with the comic industry, the comic industry is floundering and it's going away now. Because it decided to bring weirdos on board and inject weirdo sort of ideologies went into these things that's very clear within this movie i didn't think that the mcu was going to fall as far as it did as quick as it did the loki tv series is terrible you've got the falcon the winter soldier is terrible you've got wandavision was terrible and now this and so my big question is this why did they delay and postpone this movie so much when there was really nothing in it of note there was nothing in it that had any sort of effect going forward. There was no surprise within it whatsoever. It's very strange that they held this back so much. Maybe there's a, a different sort of idea surrounding why they did that. But what we do is we start off in this movie in 1995. And we have Russian undercover agents Alexei uh, Shostakov. And we have Melina Vostokov here. So we have these two characters that are posing as a husband and wife. And then they have two children with them now why i say two children is this there's one little blonde girl now it's very clear that that is yelena and as soon as you see her it's like oh that's a young yelena and then there's another character that isn't dressed like a girl doesn't really look like a girl and has blue hair so the hair is dyed blue and it's very difficult maybe that's what they set to do in this movie was to appeal to these people it's very difficult to pin down who this character is and it's only when the red guardian sits down and says my lovelies or my daughters or my honeys or something to that degree do you actually realize then that it's actually two girls sitting at the table so the person with the blue hair is actually a girl now i know an awful lot of people that have kids and they haven't got their hair dyed blue specifically not at that age so that's a strange one but th what that is doing is that is sending a message out to the woke weirdos hey you people that have been insulted for having kool-aid in your hair over the last couple of years which is true and most people that you see with these strange videos online have these multicolored hair colors that's what they're doing that's exactly what they're doing they decided not to portray them as two young girls what they decided to do is they decided to put one character that you didn't quite know what the character was nor who the character was until they escape and they get towards Ray Winston as Dreykov, another person who was possibly horribly miscast within this movie. And only then does one character refer to the character with blue hair as Natasha. Weird stuff. Now, I thought that that was really strange. But however, we have a movie then that just gets stranger and stranger as it moves along. We then move on then to more or less near modern day. So it's just after being after the likes of the Avengers have somewhat broken up. We've got the Sokovia Accords, you know, because nothing in the MCU really ever lasts. You know, you have you have Civil War, and then Cap is saying to Tony, "Look, here's a phone. If ever you need me, after them having an absolute Barney rubble." But what you do is you see then Natasha's on the run then from Thunderbolt Ross, and they never appear then in the movie until the very end. So. 
there's no sort of fear of them catching up with her at any stage, even though she's causing all sorts of trouble around the world. There's never a point in time where it's like, well, Thunderboss, uh, Thunderbolt Ross is on your tail also. He's completely written out of the movie. Now, I think a smarter thing to have been done within this movie, rather than having Dreykov linked with Taskmaster, it would have been Ross that I would have had controlling Taskmaster. And not even controlling, but like hiring this guy. I mean, he's done it in the past. He hired Emil Blonsky in The Incredible Hulk, who was the abomination. So he does have a colourful past in getting guys that are not quite all there. <laughs> They're not quite all there in the mind. And having them sent out to try and catch people he doesn't like. So to me, perhaps you could have had some link into that one within previous movies. But it was like the person, whoever wrote this movie, sat down and watched Winter Soldier and just kind of wanted to do what they did and just spewed it again then within this movie. There's a couple of different things that happen in this movie that are very much so like Winter Soldier. I mean, namely the Bucky character and Taskmaster are very much so. It's like I'm a knockoff of Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, within that movie. And there's no stakes to this movie either. That's a big problem too. But Ross is evaded by Natasha which is fantastic but she gets to Rick Mason and she has a safe house and it's to be provided by this guy over here now what's strange about this is why does she need somebody else why does she need a fixer when she's supposed to be this super spy she's supposed to be super independent she was able to track down the incredible Hulk Bruce Banner in the middle of nowhere on her own along with S.H.I.E.L.D. I suppose you could say but this is a character that has been moving throughout the MCU was able to in better self within the likes of Stark Industries without Stark even knowing until it was revealed. And then a number of other things that happened then were in the movies that just show that this character is super intelligent and that she's a character that can move herself. I mean, look at the initial scene there within the Avengers, for example. She lures people in and is able to get information and then walks out then after beating them up. That's the type of character that Black Widow is. But yet then she has a guy then to fix it. The reason why they've implemented men and put men into this movie is to make them look like idiots. I mean, every man that was in this movie, they were either one or two things, they were a complete and utter dummy beta cook, or they were this horrible, irredeemable person. So you've got Drakov, who's this horrible, stupid, irredeemable person, and then you've got Mason here, and you've got Red Guardian, who are just absolute betas within this movie. It's very clear to see what they're trying to do here, and they do succeed in trying to make men look really stupid within this movie. So the movie then moves on and it shows us then we have Yelena and she is hunting down another Black Widow. So the Black Widow has gone rogue and she has something that she wants to get a hold of and as a result they have this little bit of a knife fight and Yelena ends up winning. But in the meantime she gets sprayed with this dust and this dust then makes her snap out of something and she realises that the person that's lying on the ground isn't the person she thought was going to be or she wasn't really thinking that she should have been hunting this person down she's definitely under some sort of mind control and she decides to take the stuff and run away then there's no there's no backstory as to who that black widow was how she got the vials why she got the vials how did they know she had the vials and what was her plan what was her ultimate plan with the vials then in itself there's just nothing so that was really poor writing that they didn't show where that came from. They didn't even reference where it came from then as the movie moved on. So it was very sad to say that that they were very poorly done. <laughs> it was very poorly done. Usually these movies, you look at Iron Man and how tight that movie is. Iron Man 2 even arguably you could say is tight enough. But since then it's just been the wheels have come off for these movies and it's it's a real pity, you know. Specifically when you know what Ed Norton wanted to do. So as we move along then we have Yelena who comes into contact with Natasha they have a fight for no real reason and they are hunted down then by other Black Widows now this is a sequence of events where there's an awful lot of messing that of course Natasha pretty much falls off a large couple of story building bounces off a couple of things and jumps up and runs along with no issue whatsoever I mean she's not a super soldier there's nothing in her system there to make her be able to run off these type of things. It was incredible to watch that within in itself. I thought that that was one of the stranger things that happened within the movie. And then they move along then. So she's attacked by Taskmaster then. And we have Taskmaster turning up out of nowhere. Which is why I think that had they had this character involved 
in being Taskmaster. This is where I think that this has gone wrong. Taskmaster comes out of nowhere and attacks Natasha and blows up the vehicle then from underneath that and turns it over. And it's very clear that the character has no interest in Natasha whatsoever. He's only got interest, or we'll say we'll see you now later on. No interest in Natasha, but has interest in the vials that she has. And to me, that's quite strange because it's not really written well. Why? What's Taskmaster's reason for being there? Yes, we have Drakov who says activate the Taskmaster protocol. How does he track Natasha? How does he find her? Why does he find out? What's going to be the issue then with Natasha? Should he not think of, well, take Natasha out as well at the same time? This is a person that's evaded the Black Widows for a very long time. This is someone that you would like to bring back under control. She's an Avenger. He remarks this later in the movie and then decides not to bring her back under control. It's, it's such poor writing. And then we have the character then fights against Taskmaster. Taskmaster absolutely whoops her and kicks her off the side of a bridge unknowingly then she survives which to me seems strange because taskmaster looks like the character doesn't take any prisoners so the escape then and we have romanoff that learns that drakov is still alive after her thinking that drakov was gone now we've seen a couple of people that have talked about and he said oh well this is her demons coming back to haunt her 100 percent. what happens within this movie is natasha is talking to clint barton and clint barton is telling her yeah, the daughter's gone in. Can you see her? Have you got eyes on her? Natasha's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very clear from the way the scene has panned out that Clint Barton is actually the one that presses the trigger. But Natasha never speaks up once. She never even says that the daughter shouldn't be attacked whatsoever. She just lets it happen. So it's strange to see a movie just have a character that just has no problem with an innocent nor a child being injured whatsoever. So there's an explosion and we're to assume that Drakov and his daughter have passed away. We have Yelena then that talks to Natasha and asks her to recount the story but she leaves out Drakov's daughter. And at that point, after seeing the credits as well, particularly because in the credits they give top billing to Olga Korylenko, who is a Ukrainian-French actress, a, car- a woman who has been in a number of different movies. She was in Quantum of Solace as the Bond girl were in that movie. And straight away when you see her name in the credits. And the fact that she doesn't turn up through most of the movie. It's very clear to see who she is playing. So what happens is then we move off then again. And Romanov and Belova move then towards getting a helicopter from Mason. And the helicopter is used to break out the Red Guardian. And to me what's happened in the number of times now I don't know anybody somebody might be able to tell me in the comments perhaps if they've ever been in prison he gets dumber so he starts off being this quite intelligent character at the start of the movie he's able to do things he's able to escape he's able to throw things he's super strong and and as he's moving towards the initial character then of telling Melina look we need to get out of here he's very clued into what's going on but he comes across as an absolute dummy from this part of the movie on now i don't know about anybody else but I certainly wouldn't think that he would become dumber after being in prison i would think that he would probably as a super soldier should have gotten smarter and then what happens is this the character is shouted at and is told you better get into the helicopter get into the helicopter now and due to the fact he's overweight he can't quite make it so natasha is like oh well i'll just go and save him and there's this weird situation where she just gets herself down and she starts attacking people left right and center and red guardian is looking upon this helplessly then we have guns that are being shot at the helicopter and then we have (laughs) we have belova here who has some sort of rocket launcher and fires her at a guard's tower and takes quite a lot of enjoyment at doing so which results in an avalanche so there's an awful lot of people there that are probably going to be collateral damage because of course they rescue red guardian Now it's all for nothing because as they rescue Red Guardian he doesn't know where the Red Room is because they're looking for the Red Room now so that they can disband it. Now in all of the time that Natasha was in the Avengers she never thought about doing this whatsoever which is quite strange. Now they would probably try and say well the Fernamon stuff stopped her from thinking about the Red Room but she did have fleeting glimpses and thoughts about it so you would have thought that she might have talked to someone Tony maybe even to calm the globe vision perhaps even they might have said look let's talk about this let's see what's going on and they just don't 
and to me that that's quite an odd thing to do because they've had the means and tools of doing so but she decided not to so what happens is then we meet up then again with melina and after the david harbour character of red guardian saying that they have enough fuel to go to st petersburg they drop out of sky and then have to walk and of course she looks like a dummy then again so they get to the house there's like a safe house and as we see then as we're walking up to the house then this character rachel voice's character here has a gun and she's able to look at them and she decides for a moment it seems like she decides that she wants to take them out and then decides not to and we can see then she can control pigs what happens then after was after this at the dinner table it shows that this character is a villain so this villain has been complicit this character has been complicit this is a villain just to make you understand this she's been complicit in what Drakov has been doing which is taking people deciding then if they didn't work out that they were gone they were to be disposed of and that they can control anybody and have no free will whatsoever this character was complicit in all of this she was the scientist she was the brains behind the operation they even show as much as well when she looks at a pig and the pig is on the ground and i think i actually think this i think when looking at the pig and the pigs that they were they were going through the pen and they were controlled and the fact that they were <laughs> This pig was told to stop breeding and she was like, yeah, it has 11 seconds till I decide to tell it to breed again. I think that that was probably a subtle dig at the people who just gobble up all of this MCU stuff where they were even thinking. You know, this type of idea of just consume, don't think. I think that that was maybe a subtle dig. Maybe the writers are a little bit more intelligent than I'm giving them credit for. <laughs> but certainly that's what I thought when I seen that. I was like, I think they're insulting the audience on that one. But make no mistake about it, this character is a villain. So there's a plan that's hatched in. The cavalry is called in, the Taskmaster character is called in along with Drakov, and the characters are picked up then by the Red Room. So they're captured, they go to the Red Room. Of course, this is a moment perhaps maybe for David Harbour's character to shine. No, no. He's shot with multiple darts and he's just passed out. So. We don't get to see the Red Guardian. We don't see this super soldier be able to be of any use whatsoever. Because he gets his butt handed to him then by Taskmaster later on then in the movie. So they're taken to the Red Room. And Vostokov and Romanov use face mask technology to switch places before being captured. Now where have we seen that before? Oh yeah, we've seen that before when Natasha did the same thing as well to, to Alexander Pierce. We're in a previous movie that was a lot more superior to this one. Oh yeah, that was Winter Soldier. So when you're looking at that, you're saying this is the same game that they've played within this and they're caught out then. So what's the reason for that? Well, it's because Melina here, she understands how to open the cells. She could have just told Natasha that because at this point in time, it seems like that she's not affected by any sort of pheromones. If she understands the pheromones, she's probably dosed herself with it. So it seems like a superfluous plan to send Natasha to go and fight Drakov to finish Drakov to do whatever she's going to do with Drakov rather than Melina going doing it herself where it might have been a bit of redemption just a thought that's just something that came into my mind also she's told Natasha that the reason why she can't beat the bad guy why she can't beat Drakov is because of pheromones that she can smell him from I am absolutely not joking you this is how this movie is set up it's set up on the fact that she can't hurt Drakov due to the fact that she can smell him I'm not joking that's actually in this movie so rather than Natasha standing very far away from Drakov and being able to pull the trigger or something else she decides she wants to go up close and personal with a character that can control her what proceeds to happen is something short of unbelievable it's nothing short of unbelievable. In that Drakov decides to announce then to Natasha to her face that Taskmaster is in fact his daughter. Who has had a number of different surgeries. Who has an issue with her face now because of the explosion. There's no explanation at this point in time. As to how, I think her name is Anatonia. This is the character that's played by Olga Kurilenko. There's no explanation as to how Drakov survived. There's no sort of explanation as to how she survived he tells her that they fixed her up and put a chip in her but how how did these characters survive because as we can see the, the building explodes so how does that happen and this is why i'm saying to you i think that this movie was written in a different way i think maybe perhaps mason had some sort of 
maybe an allegiance to Drakov and that he was going to carry out the work of Drakov or maybe there was some sort of assignment given to Mason after he Drakov I'm talking about after Drakov was gone and that Mason had to hunt Natasha down any sort of story beat like that probably would have been better than what we ended up with like some sort of protocol something that was very similar I think I think to Emperor Palpatine in the old Star Wars books did he had a protocol that he sent out I think it was something even the Joker did within one of the Arkham games. Sent out a protocol to be done. Definitely done it in Batman Beyond, Batman of the Future. I don't know why they didn't do something similar like that to hear that Taskmaster was the one to be sent out then if there was an issue, which there was. So what happens is then Natasha is absolved of any and all guilt given the fact that the character Anatonia, who was a woman now because obviously we're supposed to feel sorry now because it's a woman, <laughs> has survived... So as a result, the characters fight between each other. We see then Taskmaster turns up, fights against Red Guardian, absolutely whoops him. It takes then our character here, Rachel Voice Melina, to be able to do one of the leg wraps and throw the Taskmaster character into this cell. And it looks like they're going to just leave Taskmaster there and that's going to be that. Not so much. Natasha decides upon herself as the Red Room was coming down due to the fact that Melina is after causing some sort of explosion and that the red room is going to fall down out of the sky this is like cloud city by the way this is where they've ripped it from we've no doubt that they've ripped this from star wars where it's a cloud city installation it's a city in the clouds i'm not joking yet this wasn't picked up as well too by stark tech whatsoever even though tony's probably one of the ones that's most likely got the tech to do so even perhaps even vision would have noticed even with the ultron protocol that time they would have noticed that there would have been other global threats shield should know about this too <laughs> nobody seems to know about the red room <laughs> it just turns up in the clouds so what we see then is we see then natasha has a different change of heart goes towards taskmaster and decides to let her out of the cell and she just puts the hands up and said, look, I know you want to get me. That's fair enough. I'm going to run away. So as she's running away, we see then that the David Harbour character, along with the Rachel Voice character, have now flown off and they're flying away. And an issue happens then with their engine due to the fact that Red Guardian throws a shield at a bad guy and he takes out the tail fin. So they're out of the game now at this point. They're not going to have any sort of impact what happens next. What happens next is probably one of the most cringe scenes that I've seen in the MCU. It's one of the most laughable scenes that I've seen in the MCU. And it's a scene that certainly I think a lot of people probably would have checked out of MCU movies because of it. Which is Drakov runs towards a helicopter or some sort of hovercraft, whatever you want to call it. And he's there with a lot of different men. A lot of different bad guys there that are in these masks. Which is why I do think that Taskmaster was essentially supposed to be the Mason character. And what happens is then, is the Ray Winston character of Drakov, Ray Winston is so poor in this movie, you can tell he just turned up for a check, he's, I don't know, he's trying to do a Russian accent or he's trying to just stay with the London accent, it's very, very difficult. It's clear to say that the director didn't ask for much from these actors. I would say that a lot of this is shot within one take or two takes and that they just proceeded. This movie script, from what I understand, was written within 11 days, that's insane and it's not even good like if you have a i probably could think of a better script within 40 minutes not 11 days but these have had 11 days to do this that's not even a lot of time either and they decided to move on this anyway i digress moving on through it we've got drakov now is starting to get away and on these super quick jets these really advanced jets they just can't seem to get away quick enough and everyone's back is torn that they don't see yelena jumping onto the top of the wing and she joins her two staff pieces together and sticks it into the engine and it blows up. Now, what's incredible about this is there's a lion and she's like, I'm having fun. And Natasha's like, no. And as she sticks the staff into the engine, it blows up and it blows her away. So the fire should really engulf the Elena character. It should definitely scar the character at the very least. But no, she is totally untouched. She's only knocked unconscious. Off she goes. And Ray Winston and the rest of the team that are there are now gone. At no point in time, I actually think he did that at one point in time, say she's on the wing. Nobody got out. Nobody said, uh, tell the pilot to stop. Tell him to stop. I mean, this is just bad guy sort of stuff that you would understand that they would do in a comic book. I mean, I can't believe this is happening in a movie. That they would just step off and say, okay, boom, off you go. And Delene is gone. 
But of course, because we know the stakes aren't there within this movie, we have to know how that Scarlet's out there getting these <laughs> clothes. <laughs> these clothes that we see her in then in Infinity War, because that's where there's a lot of jokes that are made, some very poor jokes of where this vest came from. Because we have to have the vest put on the Scarlett Johansson character, the Black Widow character, the Natasha Romanoff character, this character has to survive at that point, so it's very easy to see. So they, they decide not to jump off the ship and decide to take care of Yelena. They just leave her to do what she's doing, and everyone's gone now at that point. What happens after this then is there's a free fall then off the helicarrier or I should say even the red room carrier cloud city I'm gonna call it now and they dive off so she dives off to save the Elena character because the Elena character is unconscious now scared out comes Taskmaster so Taskmaster has been left out and out comes Taskmaster and they go through kind of what seems to be like PS2 type graphic CGI the CGI in this movie is really poor also they get to the ground Natasha kind of has a little bit of a fight with Taskmaster the helmet comes off and Natasha smashes a vial and that's what sorts Taskmaster out she's like I don't want to hoard her I don't want to hoard her this is my fault it's incredible stuff that happens within this movie it's very strange at no point in time either did the Black Widows that they freed from the mind control because this happens when Natasha is attacking Drakov and I'm not joking you this is how she is able to attack Drakov then she headbutts a table <laughs> She headbutts a table and even at that point she decides not to shoot, which is very strange. And then it's left down to Yelena to do it because of course and then we have to have her having the big the big sort of I suppose scalp from this movie be take her credibly then going forward. That's why they do these things. So Natasha doesn't want to whore Taskmaster and the movie then finishes up then by Thunderbolt Ross finally catching up to them. Uh seemingly knowing where the red room is going to drop and he arrests Natasha at that point. Do we see how Natasha evades his grasp and how she escapes from his grasp to be able to do what she does in Infinity War? Absolutely not. That's not what we see at all. So this is a movie that does a couple of strange things. Now what I'm going to say is this, and it's something that I always say in these type of videos, is that if you wanted to change the person under the Taskmaster mask, that's fine. And they did. That's what they did. Because I'm going to just say this. I would rather them make the mess of Taskmaster that they did within this movie. And have the time now to figure out how they're going to correct this. Rather than have Anthony Masters, the actual Taskmaster. A character that can look at people and mimic them from just looking at them. Not from any sort of tech whatsoever. Which I think was going to be a big criticism for a lot of people. Especially people that are fans of Taskmaster. And have been for a large number of years. Yes, you'll get people that are out there that will pretend to be fans of Taskmaster and not really understand what the character is about. But I think now this opens a portal for Marvel now to see that this didn't quite work and what they could do with it in the future. I'm going to say this. I think it's very akin to the Mandarin situation where they had a wonderful actor in Ben Kingsley. Do we think Olga Korolenko was a wonderful actress? Probably not, which I think why they kept her silent. They had a wonderful actor in Ben Kingsley. They called him the Mandarin against a lot of people that were comic book fans like myself. I didn't want to see Ben Kingsley playing the Mandarin. As a result, it looked like he was doing a decent enough job. And then they ruined them in that movie by making him an English stage actor called Trevor Slattery. But they did redeem themselves later on by saying there's a real Mandarin out there. And now there is the real Mandarin that's going to be in Shang-Chi. Now I don't know whether anybody has seen Kung Fu Hustle. But there's a guy that wears these arm rings ring Kung Fu Hustle. And it looks like Marvel have knocked off that movie for their design of the Mandarin within the MCU. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that one when that happens. But here's the thing. This is what I'm going to say. I have no problem with the fact that they decided to change Taskmaster within this movie. What I do have a problem with though, however, is the way they decided to conduct themselves surrounding the identity of Taskmaster. Why didn't they have... Olga Corleone go out on the stage and really drive her forward and say okay this is a, a, an all women movie this is going to be a woman fighting a woman because let's face it is anybody going to take the character seriously when he should be able to due to the strength power and the abilities that he have should be able to take care of Black Widow no problem whatsoever that she would need the help from Red Guardian 
should it have been Rick Mason? This is what I'm saying. This is why I think that they made this alteration. If it was this character here, this guy is a very tall man. He's a very tall man. And she is quite a diminutive woman. If you didn't think that this character could absolutely put a throw down, given the power set that Taskmaster has on Natasha Rom Romanoff, I think you're highly mistaken. I think you're highly mistaken. And we've seen as much as in the past. I mean, she was fairly much out of the game for what went on in previous movies when it came to massive fights and she was definitely in the background a lot more even in infinity war in itself she's a long range distance fighter then for things that are going to overpower her similarly as well in avengers itself when they had the shatari that came in she was a long range fighter for the most part in that so what i think they did with the change was probably a saving grace insofar as had they had the natasha romanoff black widow character be and or kill the taskmaster that we know i think a lot of people would have been upset because i think that that's totally written itself into a corner whereas i think now what has happened is they've opened themselves up to the ability to put in either the real taskmaster later on down the line retroactively because they do like to retcon things within this universe they've done so on a number of occasions look look for example what they're doing with ant-man they're changing who is playing ant-man's daughter they changed terence howard and don Cheadle between <laughs> Iron Man 1 and 2 this is a universe that doesn't mind changing a couple of things they're changing who the Mandarin was after the blowback that got and they're going to change I think Taskmaster after the blowback that this is going to get I think people are happy enough that the way it was portrayed was portrayed and like I said if the movie had resulted in Taskmaster being killed off or beaten by Natasha I think a lot of people wouldn't have taken him credibly then in the future then when he turns up again I think that's where this character comes into play he has told us, OT Fag Benley has told us that he has signed up for more movies. We know that they're moving towards a, it seems like, maybe even sort of a Dark Avengers or maybe even the Thunderbolts team. The fact that US Agent, the Valentina character, turns up at the end, she does, who was in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, who recruits US Agent. She's recruiting Yelena. She wants her to attack and take down Hawkeye, Clint Barton. We already know he has a series coming, of course. He's going to be handing over his quiver and his bow to a female character, Kate Bishop. You know what I'm saying? We cannot see what's going to happen with the MCU. Now it's going to become the MCU. But here's what I think is going to happen. I think they've left their door open for Taskmaster in the future. Is this the version of Taskmaster that we wanted to see? No. I don't think a lot of people were happy with the look, though. I don't think people were happy with the way it was done with regards to the tech. So I think the change that they made maybe is buying themselves more time in the future. I think that's what they've just done. So I wouldn't see all of the doom and gloom surrounding this. And like I said before, if you change the person underneath the mantle. So for example, like I said before, if you wanted to have a black man as Batman and he is not called Bruce Wayne, you go ahead and do that. That's no problem to me. But when you decide to do things like, for example, like you put in... Say, for example, Deadshot, and you have Floyd Lawton in the costume. Floyd Lawton is not Will Smith, and Will Smith does not look like Floyd Lawton. Have they decided to do something similar to this with the fact that they've called the character Antonia <laughs> instead of Anthony? Maybe. Maybe that's a subtle hint. But when we look at what's happened, and like I showed earlier on there, the character, the way the character was the, the scripted, and the way they had him underneath the suit particularly as well also that we know that the stuntman portrayed the character for the majority of the time and even when they removed the helmet Olga Korylenko's head was actually CGI'd onto the character she wasn't actually physically there from what we understand it certainly seems like they changed an awful lot up as this movie progressed it's very clear from OT Fag Benley's comments it's clear that he's disappointed that it wasn't him in the suit however I do think he's out there dodging one here insofar as i think he might be beloved as the taskmaster character if he does turn up eventually as the taskmaster and has this role and this ability then to absolutely wreck different characters because that's what we want to see as fans i can get people being upset with this i can get people that have bought into certain merchandise i can get people that have bought the likes of the marvel legend stuff i can get people that have bought into the hot toy stuff of taskmaster to have seen this being super underwhelmed and saying look i don't want anything to do with it now anymore this is a gamble by Marvel as well to see what fans will take. And I think I agree then as well. With, I've seen Eric D. Jaloy talk about this thing. And, and it's, I don't think in the next couple of years, if a character is introduced, 
into this universe i don't think it's going to be the character that we know and love like i talked about in a previous video that i would love to see henry cavill as cyclops in the x-men i think with the moves that they're making i think we'd be lucky to see the x-men being cast accurately i think we'd be lucky to see the fantastic four being cast accurately and in my opinion as it stands now i'm happy for those characters to wait until phase five because i think over the next kind of five or so years we're going to get a lot of bad movies. We're going to get a lot of bad casting decisions. We're going to get a lot of bad characters. And characters that don't fit the mould of what we know. And I think that that's exactly what we're going to have over the next couple of years. I don't foresee us getting characters that are accurate representations of what we know and love. I mean, the Ultimate Universe has a black version of Anthony Masters. I thought that was the way they were going to go with this one. In the 616 Universe, it's a white man. And... They just seem like they're hell-bent down on changing characters. Look at the fact of who they've cast as Kang. They've cast a guy called Jonathan Majors. Now, Kang is supposed to be a white character. He's Nathaniel Richards. So I don't know what sort of direction they're going to go with that character. If it is going to be Nathaniel Richards, well, then you've got problems then with relation to the Fantastic Four. So we'll wait and see when that one comes out, particularly what sort of direction they go with Kang in Ant-Man 3 Quantumania. I don't think we're going to see characters that are nailed on the characters that we know. Natasha didn't act like herself in this movie. Melina, who is a character that becomes Iron Maiden, wasn't like herself in this movie. She was the villain of the movie, in my opinion. And as the movie ended, she was able to slink off away with Red Guardian and Yelena. That was incredible. I mean, they didn't even look at this character as being complicit to this stuff. Natasha had no issue with her whatsoever. Nobody seemed to have an issue with her whatsoever. She was the bottom <laughs> she was the bottom line of what went on in this movie. She was complicit with Drakov. She had to have known Drakov was still alive. She had to have known what he was doing. So she's just as bad, if not worse, than Drakov at this moment. And she was just let walk away and was like, Oh well, we'll forget about you and what you've been doing and all your horrendous deeds. Only 20 odd minutes ago did you have a pig and tell the pig that the pig would breed after it was going to gas out. Like, it's incredible stuff. Then you look at the Red Guardian character. In the comics, Natasha and Red Guardian are actually romantically linked. I think at one point in time they're actually even married. So they've taken that entirely away then from this movie. They decided then to make him a father figure. Not a very good father figure and of course then what we've been seeing in the MCU and at Disney at large over the last couple of years has been poor father figures. It's going to just increase. Look at the Luke Skywalker character, look at the Han Solo character, look at the Tony Stark character. They're just absolutely throwing these characters under the bus. And they've done the same as well too here with Red Guardian, a guy that just sold out his two daughters, one that didn't look like a daughter at the time and then was imprisoned then as a result. Comes out an absolute dummy. And as a result then has no effect on the movie whatsoever. Has no real implementation of his powers. No real implementation of the character's history. The romantic link here. I mean here's the thing. They talk about this thing called the Bechdel test. Where it's talking about female characters. And if they have adequate screen time. And I mean you want to see some of the people that write about this type of stuff. And if there's a plot point that centers around the women talking about men. Or how much of it. I think the original plan of this movie, possibly when it was just stating, was probably going to be a love triangle between these three, perhaps maybe the Red Guardian, Natasha Romanoff, and the Taskmaster character. And there was going to be a big issue then. And then maybe Melina was involved then as the ultimate villain. Because isn't it curious that none of these posters, an awful lot of these posters, don't have Ray Winston on it, even though he's the villain. And he's a very underwhelming villain at that. I think he's probably the worst MCU villain that we've had. And that's saying a lot. Where do we rank this movie? This movie for me is below Captain Marvel. That's how bad this movie was. And I actually... It's bottom of the list for me. I think this is the worst MCU movie that we've ever seen. I think it's bad because it was a poor send-off for the Natasha Romanoff character. It was a poor send-off with the market and that surrounded it, particularly from Scarlett Johansson and David Harbour. I mean, he has to come under a lot of criticism for that. And what we have is a character and a movie that just has no stakes. It attempts to be something like the Bourne movies. But we've seen this sort of movie before. I mean, we've seen Atomic Blonde. Nobody was really interested. We've seen the likes of Red Sparrow. Nobody was really interested. So to me, what was the point in this movie at all? 
it just didn't seem like it was needed it seems like it's complete filler it seems like they decided to just throw it out because they could it'd be interesting to see what the figures are for this movie i'm absolutely very much so thinking that disney are probably going to lie about the figures in this i mean the merchandise that's on the shelves that's going for deep discount says it all at the moment so that's what i would say to that and what we have now is the first entry or I should say re-entry now to the mcu for a lot of people after the end game phase and are people going to keep going back after this i don't know i couldn't see it because yes they will say well this is the first female movie and second female movie because the first movie was so spectacular and people paid in to see it that remains to be seen too because i mean did they there was a lot of people out there that were posting about certain screenings the same with black widow here there's a lot of people showing that they have empty cinemas that they're sitting in and to be fair to Captain Marvel, it was sandwiched between Infinity War and Endgame, so it was always going to be a success if it was indeed a success itself. But this movie doesn't have that, and this movie really falters as a result. So what should have happened? Well, what should have happened is they should have filmed this movie way before Infinity War. This should have been a movie, if they were very serious about representation and very serious about diversity and very serious about characters getting what they needed to and the fact that they want to spew all of this sort of nonsense at us as viewers that's what they should have been doing then and they should have been taking taking their licks whilst they could because if they released this during the full swing of the mcu before infinity war and endgame this would have been absolutely panned and rightly so the only saving grace that this movie has is that it has returned after what has gone on over the last year and that it's given people a little bit of escapism which is great but it's a poorly written movie. The characters are poorly written. The motivations are poorly written. And as a result, Scarlett Johansson, Natasha Romanoff, The Black Widow has a really poor send off. It feels like a backdoor pilot for this character for the large majority of the time. We're, we're no doubt going to see this character, Red Guardian, again. David Harbour is already talking about how he wants to come back. OT Fag Benley. I think will eventually become Taskmaster in some way, shape, or form because I do think. That the fact that he's a fixer, the fact that he has technology, might they might end up doing something in the future that he'll double cross whore, and there might be some sort of issue then as a result. But we'll wait and see. This movie is at the bottom of the list for me. It's worse than Captain Marvel, it's worse than that man too. I can't understand where the MCU is gonna go now. It's had a dire time with the TV shows that it's at the point now. It's having a dire time with this return to a movie. Eternals looks terrible. And you also then have Shang-Chi that's coming along that looks woeful in itself. Like, think about this for a second. When they released the second trailer of Shang-Chi, the only thing people talked about was Abomination. They talked about the Emil Blonsky character. They didn't care about the Shang-Chi character. They didn't care about the Mandarin. People cared more about a, I would say, two or three second glimpse of Abomination than they cared about that movie at all. So what the MCU need to do is, they need to understand who the fans are. Yes, you can appeal to the normies. Yes, you can appeal to the weirdos and all of these type of people that you're trying to now bring into the franchise who actually actively repulse the fans and the normies. You're going to bring these people in to then make a total mess of what's going on. And at this stage, I think they will come back groveling towards fans then towards Phase 5. I'm here for that. I'm happy to see it go the way it's going to go for the next couple of years. Laugh at it. Certainly then hope for a return to normalcy. Certainly a return then to getting characters that are accurate. I mean, we're hearing words now around at the moment that they're looking to change what Professor X looks like. They're looking to change what Magneto looks like. Things that you don't want to see nor you don't want to happen. We want the characters represented and actor actively and accurately represented as we know them. We don't want these characters changed from what they look like not at all like i said if you want to put someone else under the helmet under the mask and change the name of that character and you have the mantle of that character fire ahead and you're going to fall upon that then as it is the anatonia character the taskmaster character in this was poorly written there was no lions it wasn't really a threat it didn't seem so and we knew then from viewing it that it was a dude in a suit for the large majority which if I was Olga Korolenko, I probably got a good payout for that. But are you going to be remembered as a top tier MCU villain? No. And that's the bottom line.
Anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell up above for future uploads. Check out the links posted in the description down below to support the channel. Consider joining the channel today. And I'll talk to you later. Good luck.